Yes, yes, yo, you are now listening to the shofar blowing, and the shofar is a ram's horn that's blown to inspire the people to do their thing, and the shofar is also blown to coordinate a king or a queen. And so the shofar today is being blown to awaken the treasure chest. This is Faux Show Health on Blog Talk Radio, and I'm your host, Shofar, and today my guest is Yao Morris, or as we love to call him affectionately, Master Yao Morris. Uh, he is the author of many books, including including The Awakening, The Master Masculine, also The Oracle of Kimsa Nu, uh, what else, The Return. But uh, just to give you a feel for the guest today, I met him back in 2002, and every now and then someone comes along, and if we're fortunate, if we maybe haven't fucked up too much in our life, <laughs> we might meet someone who comes along and really just changes things for us and really sets us, uh, helps us to up-level and to, 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 to really change the course of where things are going. And that's what this gentleman that we have on here today is. And for those of you who are not familiar with his work, who haven't read his books and everything, first off, I definitely recommend going through and seeing his catalog, see, see which ones resonate with, with you and everything. Uh, but one of the things that I want to say about especially our elder uh, sisters and brothers that are here and embodied with us still is to recognize and honor them while they are here, you know. And inshallah, as the, our Muslim sisters and brothers say, um, which means Allah or God willing, he'll have many more years to be here amongst us in body. But to give this brother his props and to really understand the wisdom and the knowledge that he is bringing to us now, you can still talk to this brother right now, you know, and, and, and have deep conversations and everything. So that's just, if you hear my voice, hopefully you heard what I just said. Notice how the word heart has here in it. It has, it has ear in it. So anyway, with all of that being said, um, I want to welcome this brother online and, um, and get some of his wisdom to share with you all today. So, Master Yao, are you here? I am. All right. Cool, cool. Well, thank you uh, for being on the, on the show again. It's been a, been a minute and everything. And, uh, yes, to the point where we even had, we even, we even got shows in the pocket that I didn't even know of that we had already uh, recorded. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having me. Oh, it's an honor, bro. It is definitely an honor, uh, especially in this time when we're at such a, a crossroads. Uh, glass half full, half empty is all about how we want to look at it because there's a lot of good, there's a lot of things going on either way right now. So with that being said, you know, and I have my own take on where we're going and which way, you know, where, which which way we're headed together collectively and everything. I want to play my part in that. So great to have you on again. And uh, we're going to be talking about, for, again, family, we're talking about today the treasure chest. Um, and I'll get him to explain exactly what that is. But before that, I just want to give you all one little caveat or one little nugget to hold on to. When we talk about these things, we're not talking about gender necessarily. We're talking about feminine or masculine energies, which are in all of us to different degrees. So with that, Master Yao, what exactly is the treasure chest archetype or energy? <clears throat> In the 1990s, there was a, a call to break down some of the stuff that I was teaching into its elemental components so that people could understand it better. Uh, around 2004, we did a tour on the East Coast, and we did a special series of lectures on the roles, strengths, weaknesses of the masculine and the feminine. Uh, it, it was well-received. And some of the women who had attended some of those lectures prevailed on me to write them down and put them together in a book because they thought it would help uh, men to understand women. When the book was published several years later, we found that women liked it more than men. <laughs> so, so it ended up, we changed the cover, it ended up being directed toward women. And it's mm. been popular ever since. The, it talks about the house of the woman. In other words, uh, she has roles in society, and she has attributes in her DNA to help her fulfill those roles. They're basically four set, these attributes in the DNA. And we talk about them as like one of them is called nesting, or 
and other mammals besides humans have these instincts as well. We talk about it as a nesting instinct. In other words, once you know you're going to have a family, there's an instinct to prepare, to get resources, to get ready to, to, to feel that. Um, mm-hmm. There's an instinct to maternal, to give birth and keep life going, keep the cycle of life going. There's an instinct to uh, enjoy, to have something to motivate you to continue life from day to day. We call that the elegant rose. And then uh, we have more than one body. We have three that in the Grand Trine system that we talk about. Uh, there are others, but there are three main ones. And so you you have to have a way to control the bodies that aren't physical. And so that's the seated hawk. So the woman has these different attributes that allow her to interact with her environment and the society. The treasure chest is one of the critical ones. It's the you know, sort of the third one in the rotation. And, you know, in the book, we talk about it from its obvious perspective. It's to get money, get resources. So birds don't deal in cash and currency. You know, they deal in stuff to make nests. The, 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 the mother, when she knows she's pregnant, the mother bird, she situates herself somewhere where there's going to be food easy at hand for her young. So it's with, with women... They, their nesting instinct is to get money or to get a man with money, get a job, or in, in other words, to prepare to support a family, basically, and to support a community. So uh, in the book, we talk about the obvious aspects of it, how to activate it, what it looks like, um, how we can recognize women who have it, and how a woman can recognize when she doesn't have it. Uh, today, you know, we're going to get a little deeper into it, and we want to talk about the unseen aspects of it. We want to talk about, uh, especially for those who have read the books, we want to talk about it from a higher perspective. See, mm-hmm. in all these books, from Amamra to the Holy Grail of Orgasm, it, uh, you know, there's, there's several ways that you can uh, uh, communicate with the book. You can read the book. And it has, you know, its obvious message, of course. Uh, But then there's also an energetic way that the book can can interact with you. And then thirdly, you can you can you can look at the books a little bit differently because they're actually talking about three different ways that the woman can be, because you know she's got three different bodies. So it's a physical way you can look at it. So you can take it verbatim. If you look at it metaphorically, you can also see that it's talking about her light body and how her light body, that aspect reacts through her light body. So, and I want to cover that to some extent today because I want people to understand that these elemental archetypes that's in her DNA, they're not just for her physical surface life that she knows about. They also allow her to interact in her energy body, in, in the astral realm, in, in the realm of the ancestors, and in, in those types of things. And we want her to know that, you know, that these things even have a higher purpose beyond that. And so there's a synergy there. And so each one sort of has a particular thing that it allows her to do above and beyond, you know, what, what it what it's what it what it says in the book so i want to start that discussion today because mm-hmm. um, in in the years since the book has been out many women have come back and said you know i'm i'm starting to see another definition to this i'm starting to see another way that this thing fits in and so uh i want to you know spread that a little bit more love it well that's a treat for us so let's do it i mean the explanation of the the three different bodies and everything. Um, uh, I think maybe if we apply what you just said about those three different bodies, then we can take even deeper in some different things here. So number one is like the icons that you chose. You know, I always like to say that thoughts are, you know, the the pictures that we see and then also the the verbal vibrations or the the, the meaning making uh, that we that we make from the words or whatever. So the icons of the of the treasure chest. Some of the things that you said are the coins, uh, the uh, you know specifically gold coins. Um, I always 
the word gold has God in it. I thought that was always interesting. Gems, titles, deeds, and I'd uh, love to hear on those, but then another one, Master Yao, that I thought was deep is that you talk about uh, ancient books and patents or certificate, patent certificates, which to me is like intellectual property and ideas. How does all of that tie into that? Exactly. Uh, you know, what is prosperity? Prosperity is, you know, at the level of the, the, the treasure chest is really talking about the human society prospering and then being fair enough to share it with all the women who are part of that society. And so every woman has a way that she can contribute to society, to community. For some, you know, it's being a mother. Um, I would say that the mother of Osama, uh, of the, the mother of uh, Obama, can be proud of herself, and maybe that's all her she needed to bring to the world. Um, Madam Walker allowed women to have different types of hairstyles. Um, it may not be a big deal to some people, but being able to look good and have self-esteem is very important to women. Uh, other women wrote books. Uh, some women feed their community. I remember going to Africa and, and, and coming in contact with a, a, a chiefess or a, an Akampo, and she had two or three big pots, and when things got tough, she, brought, she went to the city and brought food, brought it back, and cooked it up, her and her helpers, and people just came by and ate. And so she, you know, she was like the matriarch. So all of these things like that, that's, that's the treasure chest. And when we look at the things on her altar, it's basically saying that uh, women can bless their communities in so many different types of ways. In other words, you need fuel to drive your car. The car is nothing if you don't have fuel. The treasure chest, that's your job, to keep the fuel coming. And so we think of the main thing as being food, but that's not what really feeds humans. Ideas mm -hmm. feed humans. Ideas, mm -hmm. uh, concepts, patterns, uh, songs, um, that's what feed humans. And mm -hmm. new ideas, how do, we, how do we do mothering better? How does society come together better? How do we build better things, you know, that, that allow humans to, to have a richer, fuller life. That's the treasure chest. And so the altar that we describe in the symbolic uh, icon is talking about all of those things. And again, how do these things come about? So it brings us back to the discussion of the three realms. And uh, we've been talking, you know, it used to be a secret kind of a thing, you know, that you were taught in secret societies and stuff like that. Um, I remember, you know, the first time uh, I was in my 20s when I first was taught about it in, in a secret society. Um, and I thought it was pretty, I believed it as soon as I read it because I was like, this makes perfect sense. And then the, the next thought that I came to me was, how come they're not teaching this in school? How come my parents didn't know? So, the the thing about the the um, uh, when they discovered the microscope, the guy you know went and apologized to the Native Americans he knew because you know he knew that white people had told them that they were barbaric and and stupid because of their belief in spirits and and that there were things that were invisible that were affecting humans. Then he looked under the microscope and you know discovered bacteria and he went back because he understood and he said okay I, you know tell me more about how these things are affecting us so he he learned and he adapted so when you understand that you have an energy body you know and you understand the science of the energy body then you understand what happens at birth that the, a spirit takes over the fetus and that's when the fetus decides to breathe and have life. Uh, the mm -hmm. physical body cells are not 
what makes us human. It's the spirit, the energy body. But there's a body higher than that. Uh, that's, you know, the light body. And the spirit body or the energy body is really more or less a manifestation from the light body. The cell body basically is a manifestation of the energy body. And the reason that it develops the way that it does inside its mother's womb is partly from the genes of the father and the mother, but mainly from the spirit that's going to uh, take it over once it's born. And you can contact that spirit before it's born to prove that, which we've done many times. Getting back to the three bodies, it's much more important how these bodies line up and relate to each other than it is looking at any one body on its own. And so there's a way to look at these traits that the woman has from purely a surface perspective. You need money to live, basically. You know, you need a good place, a good home. You need a safe environment for your children. You need a good place to, you know, to support the family, the, the, the community, the marriage. And that's the treasure chest job, okay? But if you look at it from the perspective of all three bodies, it's not that simple anymore. So then mm-hmm. you see that there's a cyclic thing going on. When you look at the moon element of a woman, the moon is trying to bring life into being. So this is a difficult thing to do and to sustain, to keep that cycle of life going. In other words, keep bringing new life here and get it started. So that's the moon. Then the next one is the elegant rose. We're going to talk about that later. And its job is to take up where the moon left off, converts all things to pleasure. So that we're not just talking about physical pleasure. We're talking about the spirit body and the light body too. So it converts all things to pleasure so humans will continue to be motivated to live and to overcome and to engage. In other words, to give people a reason to live. Once the moon brings the life there, it needs a reason to live. And then you have the treasure chest. It gets resources, fuel, to keep that life moving and to help you coordinate those three bodies. And it's constantly converting this material world into a spiritual world. It's gradually uplifting the vibration of all things. So women are constantly doing this, whether they realize it or not, some to a very small degree, some to a greater degree. So when you look at the things on that altar, the treasure chest, the treasure maps, the patents, the certificates, the, the gold, you know, it's saying we're taking these things, we're taking just regular physical stuff, and we're gradually trying to convert it so that it, when it interacts with humans, it's going to bring about an uplifting, an evolution. And so that's what it's doing at the higher, in the higher bodies. So it's not just what it's doing at the physical level. It's what is it doing at the other levels as well. So I'm going to stop for a second and see if, if, if you think we sufficiently talked about the three bodies or if we need to talk about them more. Massively uh, broke that down and, you know, if I understand what you're saying is, uh, you know, those those icons, those things, like, say, for instance, gold, and I, I think there is a reason why, again, the word God is in there, perhaps, uh, some something, some, some analogy or something that you know, metaphorically or metaphysically to catch on to there, that uh, the, the treasure chest, when we have it on our mind, it appreciates things. Um, it causes things to to go to a higher vibration, to have a higher refinement, to have, you know, to, to, to increase its value. So when we wrote the book and we incorporated into the book the three different metaphoric meanings, the book was originally written so that men would understand women. <laughs> now, and so, you know, uh, that's a challenge. <laughs> cause, you know, a lot of guys right. don't want they don't want to know. They see and that's enough for them. But I'm just saying that, you know, yeah. your audience – uh, is a little higher in, in in what they're trying to achieve. They're, you know, they're seeking to to understand life and live life a little bit better, a little bit higher. So we're speaking to them. So basically, uh, when men are looking at women, even if the woman doesn't embody this yet, the men need to be looking at women 
uh, with the first definition of the treasure chest that's in the book. In other words, she's the gatherer of resources, and your job is to get resources and give them to her so she can use them. You know, so when you look in the animal kingdom, <laughs> you know, uh, the males don't necessarily tell the females what to do with the resources. The, the females basically tell the males, go get resources and bring it back. And sometimes the male makes the decision, but most of the time it's the female deciding this is what we need to survive and, and, and thrive, okay? So humans are a little bit, a little bit different, but still, that's the male's job. And so why are we saying that the male should serve the female in this regard? Because in some of these archetypes, the woman is serving the man, and some the man is serving her. Why? Because we're saying that basically in this one regard out of four, the man is serving the woman. Why? Because she is not just gathering resources so that the family, she's constantly converting material vibrations into higher vibrations, into more spiritual vibrations, into more godlike, more celestial types of vibrations, if she's doing what she's put here to do. And therefore, if men are going to live in a world that's gradually evolving, gradually becoming higher, gradually becoming less tied down to mundane things, then women have to be empowered in certain regards. Now, in other ways, women are destined to serve men. And I think that, that women would be more willing to do it if they understood all three bodies and they understood the ways that men are charged in their archetypes to help life evolve and thrive at all three levels, not just in this physical world. But we neglect to spread these types of knowledges uh, sufficiently enough and I don't think that men have the proper context in which to consider women. We we have a very, very small context in which we consider women. And I think we have to, I know, we have to broaden that. Mm. I say, I hope. <laughs> Damn, that's deep. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I, I mean, so many, many gems in there, uh, family, to to take into your being, you know, uh, I always like to say, you know, point out again that the words heart has ear and hear in it. You'll hear me say that more and o more often. Uh, and to not just, you know, listen to what, you know, is being said here, but to actually hear it with your heart, with your being, um, with that inner ear. But you said about society prospering and being and prospering to the point that, you know, this is one of the, the energies that the, Treasure Chest brings is to to help society prosper, whatever her gift is, whatever it is that she brings to the planet, and then for us to to raise up together as a society to be evolved to share. I thought that was really profound. And then also um, with those blessings, you know, being things that some of them are intangible things. I, I, it's a lot of the things that you were, you know, like ideas, songs, you know, you add in your poetry or whatever. These are things that may not necessarily be physical. So Something, something there to think on. Uh, another thing, you know, time passes quickly here, and we're almost are already at the thirty-minute mark. But I want to also, I, I wouldn't be doing justice to that chat, to the to that chapter, or to what you were talking about with the treasure chest, to talk about a little bit, to touch on the unity factor, that unity equals abundance, and how you know womb beings or AKA women, I like to call them womb beings these days, need to unify to work together and everything. Uh, can you speak a little bit to that? Well, the, we're living in a dark age, really. And, the, you know, most of the women don't have their treasure chest online. There are very few. I mean, I wouldn't say very few, but there's not a lot. It's not a majority. It's a, it's a large minority, but not a great minority. And so with most of them, it manifests as a desire to shop. So I want men to hear this. When we see women with a desire to shop, it's basically saying she's looking for correction from her father or from her female peers. And and if when you see that woman who just wants to buy stuff, 
know in your heart that inside of her longing to get out is a higher thing seeking to convert the things that she acquires into a higher vibration, if that energy can be brought online, then um, we get to the next thing. Uh, but before I do, let me go back and get you to repeat your question so I make sure that I address that first and before I get into all this other stuff. Go ahead. No, no you're good. No, you, I think you were going there. Uh, so that the unity factor, the, the, the whole idea of them, you know, just of uh, there needing, needing to be some synergy in order to have true treasure chest energy, what manifests or what causes it to, to really take root is the whole concept of unity. Exactly. So the lower our vibration is, the more divided we become, the more we buy into false beliefs that we are different because of religion, language, culture, location, geography. But she, as she gets her treasure chest online, sees through that better than men do. Men, you know, I'm not going to get into why, but she sees through that once she gets her archetype online. And she's constantly working to unify people against things that tend to divide us. And so and she does this not by diplomacy. She does this by raising the vibration of material things. So how, how do you do that? In other words, when you take something that appears to be simply physical, like a stone, and you turn it into jewelry, if you take something that is just, you know, cloth, and you make it decorative, give it color, put a pattern on it, and you make it more festive, when you take a house and you dress it up and you put fine furnishings in there, people feel more uplifted. You don't feel so, you know, down to the to, to to the earth, and the more she the more she rises up, the more she takes everything and, and especially money, and makes it the opposite of a purchase vehicle. And so instead of trade that men love and wealth, she takes that money and turns it into something cultural. She uses it in a way that it uplifts culture, and thus that's what unifies people. So all of the things that, that we see which divide people, especially classes of money, when she is empowered and, which, and when she has her archetype online fully, then she's going to use the money to bring people back together. Wow. Yeah, I love what you were saying there, that, you know, the trade factor and upgrading and uh, creating culture. Basically, again, we see the theme of she, she's, she's causing – the value of something to go up is like she she buys something or whatever, but then she she puts her own little spin on it, you know, her own little flavor or whatever on it, and and like you said, adds to the culture. Um, and the word culture, of course, also having the same roots as uh, you know cultivating and everything. You know, I want to be honorable honor honor your time, and also, but I have two more with the treasure chest that I definitely just feel like the the family would really uh, do well to to hear these, uh, hear you expound upon it, hunting. And gathering, a gathering and hunting. Um, you said that hunting inspires uh, or uh, implies rather scarcity, and you know, and that gathering is more about the energy of abundance. Can you speak to that a little bit? So important. We have to protect women. Our women have to protect themselves. And so, what we have done that is a sin, that is evil is that we have made it so hard for women to support themselves financially. Thus, they have become uh, money grabbers like men were. And she's not meant to be that. She shouldn't have to really struggle so hard to get money. Um, women are gatherers. They should not be made to be yang and to be hunters. Hunting implies you're going to kill. And men are supposed to be killers. You know, that's natural for men. Uh, you can say what you want, but it's not natural for women. And so, you know, to hunt implies you're going to kill. And men are killers. They're predators, just like alligators and lions. Of course, they've gotten it kind of screwed up a little bit now because most of the times we don't kill our food. We go to the grocery store and buy it. But men are killers. 
and it implies scarcity. There's not a lot of the thing you're trying to kill, and it's hard to kill it. You look at National Geographic, you'll see when, when animals are hunting, it's not easy to kill other animals. And so it is with the hunt. When you're trying to make money that way, it's hard to do. Women are gatherers. They're yin. That's how they're supposed to be. It should be easy. You just go out and pick it. And so with women, they attract the money to them. They should not be hunting it. It's an important distinction that women should not be stuck in traffic all day. They shouldn't be in these very competitive jobs. They shouldn't be having to struggle to get resources and to become masculine in the process. Yeah, that's deep. That's very deep uh, as far as, like, the resources just being there and readily available and ease and grace with it, whereas where you're saying, like, with the masculine, it does take forth, take effort, uh, efforting and and resilience, you know, these are totally different energies and words and frequencies and everything. So that's that's really deep. Uh, wow. And then the last thing, you know, I, I, I know that there's a lot of uh, uh, single womb beings that listen in. Uh, I would like to, for you to, you know, and this can maybe be the closing out thing that we speak on, is you said about the, the harvesting and being able to attract kind of like the egg, being able to just call in the sperm or whatever, you know, magnetizing it. Um, can you speak a little bit to the treasure chest energy as it relates? Because, I mean, we're talking about resources, land, assets. Some of these moon beings are like, well, what about a man? You know, the resource of a man. <laughs> so can you speak a little <laughs> bit to, to that? Well, first and foremost, at the treasure chest level, men serve women. So men get money and give it to women. Boom. That's how it goes. Now, there's a whole lot. It's much more complicated than that. But men belong on Wall Street fighting to get money. Women do not. Women can do it. Don't get me wrong. Women can be as good on Wall Street as any man. That's not what I'm saying. But she does not belong there. She does not need, She should not be competing to get money. In other words, when it gets to the point where in order to get money, you've got to get out here and hustle. She needs to have a man or men. It doesn't have to be just one. Men should do that for her on her behalf so that she can remain in her feminine energy. And so in her yin state, she attracts, she creates the condition that allows the money to come to her at her energy body level. And eventually it shows up in, as physical currency, as physical wealth, as physical resources. When you talk about attracting men that's not the treasure chest doesn't do that so i mean the, the bird attracts a male bird because she's building a good nest so she could attract a man by having a beautiful home a, a prosperous home in a nice neighborhood in a nice community and and she's surrounded by a lot of women so when men look at her a smart man and there's not a lot of those today <laughs> <laughs> but a smart man is looking at not just the woman he's looking at the women she's associating with he's looking at that whole clan so he's looking at that the women who she surrounds herself with are these women acting together in concert to to, to create prosperity and i know women like that but most women haven't gotten to that point yet where they understand you don't get money as a singular entity you get money as a corporate entity with other women, right? And you, you 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 get the men to go along with it. And that's, again, a lot of men don't know that they're supposed to do that. The actual physical attraction of a man, that's the elegant rose's job, and she's very good at it. Uh, the elegant rose, which we're going to talk about next, is what attracts men, and she puts them into a trance, and she gets them to support the treasure chest. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I remember Raul Nefer Amin saying uh, that, you know, we we often meet with failure in life when we can't bring on all of the tree of life, you know, the different personality types or personalities uh, or energies, Arishas, Devas, whatever we want to call them, when we can't sufficiently bring them all on if we're just a hot personality, but we can't bring on the cool, at some point that's going to make us not either be optimum or either meet with straight-up failure. So 
Uh, I love how what you're saying, you know, we have to basically balance and, you know, bring bring all of them on mind. Uh, so, yeah, the, the transitioning into the Elegant Rose, is there anything, you know, anything you want to leave the family with as far as just wrapping up uh, in, in a nice little bow, the, the treasure chest? Is there anything that you would like to, to add to close this out? I would say that uh, when we look at the young girl and the young woman and we see that they are materialistic, uh, we should not think of it as a bad thing. We should think of it as an unfinished woman. That if we help her to bring her energies online, instead of her just being materialistic, she will be constantly converting the material world into something higher and of greater value. We talk so much today, and, and we have a course called, you know, High Value Dating, High Value Relationships. And what brings value to those relationships from the female perspective is that quality of take don't, don't just let the relationship be. Always constantly be taking each element of it and making it higher, giving it greater value. I love it. Wow. Powerful stuff, y'all. Cool. Well, you know what? Uh, I would love for you to be able to do what you just told us about the high-value dating a program that you have in closing out. Uh, what other things do you have going on? Is there any events or, uh, you know, workshops or uh, new books on the horizon? Uh, anything you want to share with the family before we close out here? We have changed the uh, course um, curriculum, all of the courses this year. We haven't done any of the of the of the new versions yet. So uh, we're wrapping that up. On at this, you know, in, in the next few weeks, so that we just finished the 360 degrees of Tantra course, and we have uh, added to it, revised it, upgraded it, whatever you want to say, and that's going to be available soon. We are constantly changing the courses to make them interesting. So the thing that when we ask people, you know, we're constantly asking, asking, what do you want to, what do you want to see in the catalog? And everybody is this year talking about dating. They're saying it's just atrocious. It's terrible. It's awful. And, mm. you know, it's like they've lost a lot of interest in dating. So mm -hmm. we, we, we came up with the course High Value Dating, which is, come, which is sort of a branch of, the, of high value relationships. And so the, the, the real, um, uh, we took, basically took the pain body course and the high-value dating course and combined them. <laughs> and so we, you know, in, in the coaching, uh, uh, there's a lot of demand for how to look for a partner or and if you find one, how to develop that partner to suit you. And so, uh, you know, there's a lot of, of stuff that we have. One of, one of the things is called the, a positive reinforcement number protocol, and then there's, uh, you know, the whole, of course, the counterfeit personality stuff, eliminating the pain body stuff, trauma. Uh, and one of the key things that's becoming, that's really become a real issue, there's two aspects to it. One is detoxing from virtual sex. And so we have an epidemic today uh, because of social media of men who are addicted to pornography. And it's probably even worse when we talk about females, the addiction to pornography. Typically, the profile, you know, for men and women, uh, it's weed and pornography. Everybody talks about Netflix and chill. But the real thing that's going on is weed and pornography. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, if you look into the bedrooms and into the living rooms, you know, that's that's really what you're going to see a lot of. So we talk about when people get into a decent situation, when, you know, um, the reason they can't have successful dating is because they don't have a way of getting out of the addiction to pornography and the addiction to weed and and back into a way that they can satisfy each other and be happy again. Because there's no bridge, there's no trans, there's no transition, there's no segue, and so the course is a segue, more or less. I mean, it's a lot more than that, but that's what it is. 
So what you have with the men is that, you know, the pornography affects their sexual performance first. It, it does a lot of other stuff, but the thing that we want to key in on right now is that it affects the sexual performance. So you want to get them out of that addiction and into the um, into another format. So And it's the same thing. You know, we talk about weed, but there's a lot people are into. So, you know, fentanyl, um, opioids, um, crack. And, I mean, that's just a whole bunch of stuff. They got all kinds of stuff, mollies and this. I, I can't even, I don't even know what half of the stuff is, really. But basically having some type of uh, something that you can take that recreates a virtual reality. In other words, when you take these substances, it allows you to experience something you like that you haven't actually experienced in real life. So it gives you this euphoric feeling without you having lived it. And so this helps support the 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 this virtual sex where you you had a sexual feeling but you didn't actually have sex, okay? So with women it's even worse because um, you know, you have an equal number of women, in my opinion, addicted to porn, but it, it manifests in a slightly different way in that um, they're not so much addicted to virtual sex as they are addicted to the script. <laughs> in mm-hmm. other words, sex doesn't feel good to them unless it's following the script that their virtual mm-hmm. programming is. And so they have a real hard time transforming into a real relationship because the real relationship has it doesn't have a script. It just flows out and boom. It doesn't follow the script that they've constructed and therefore they don't get the orgasmic reaction that they want in the beginning. So this is a big, big, big problem right now. And it's a it's a it's a component of the course of you know how to obtain high value relationships. And so that's going to um, it. The, the the framework is done uh, right now. We're we're working on the website so that you know people can take the course at any time. And we are you know uh, we have the uh, clinics from time to time during the year to su- to support the courses. And and we've done some testing on it, and it's been it's very popular so far. That's the main thing that we're doing right now. Powerful, powerful. And what's your website? Uh, www.grandtrineint. So that's grandtrine, T-R-I-N, as in Nancy, E, I-N-T, short for international, dot com. Um, right now, the membership site is foremost, but we're going to uh, transfer the server back and so that you can see the full website very soon. Very cool. Yeah, and I can tell you all, family, that the, the membership site, uh, you know, uh, uh, Kirti and me both are, you know, uh, members and a lot of good, you know, content and great things on there, y'all. So definitely check that out. And, uh, yeah, you know, and, and, again, the books and stuff, you know, there's a lot of really good books with great ideas. The, the, the book that we were actually uh, taking this information from today is Awakening the Master Feminine, Awakening the Master Feminine, which is also available on Master Yow's website. Definitely. So, you know, I want to give a shout-out to, um, to one of the members, um, Tony, who helped with the membership site. Um, mm-hmm. It's not quite finished yet. Um, there have been a lot of praise and a lot of uh, criticisms of the of the site, but um, you know, for like four years, we had members, but no membership site. In other words, we had people making a, a twelve dollar a month contribution, but they didn't get anything for it, and and we we constantly wanted to change that. So last year, we spent about six months trying to get the membership site up, and we did get it up. And I want our members to understand that it's not done. We've got about 30 videos on there, 
and about 10 free, free videos on there. But, you know, our goal is to get 100 rotating at any particular time. And we, we're not working on that right now. But as soon as we finish what we're doing, we're going to get back and we're going to start adding more videos to that, to the membership site. Um, so that's an important a component of the whole Grand Tron program. I can see that. that. That makes sense to me. It's like a overall reading or uh, the treasure chest energy itself overall the, the, of, of your, your company and your broadcast. Very powerful. First, I, just, I, I once again want to thank you for having me on. And I want to say to all the men and women listening that, you know, we're a long way from where we need to be. We're living in a dark age. There's no doubt about it. Um, and I don't, I want to make sure that it's understood that the comments that I've made previously are not meant to be judgmental. There's a lot of people that, you know, they're doing marijuana and porn because, you know, they just don't have a lot of options now, or they don't see it, or they don't know, or they haven't been exposed to, op to alternatives. And so that doesn't mean that they're bad people. Uh, if you haven't <clears throat> had some of these experiences or you, you know, you don't know people who are rolling like that, that doesn't mean that you're not evolved to some extent. That doesn't mean that you don't have some culture. That doesn't mean that you don't have worth. It's quite the contrary. We are all, including myself, trying hard to evolve, trying hard to get better. And so you may be at one point, somebody else may be at another point. But my final thing is that you should always be pointing upward. Even if you're at a really, really low place now, you should always be pointing upward. It doesn't mean that you stop porn. It doesn't mean that you stop having sex the way you've been having it. It simply means... It's your obligation to try to get to the next higher stage, whatever that is, and to try to sustain that, to seek out this knowledge, and to allow members of the opposite sex to have some space that they can evolve safely, securely. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that we're all in a struggle. It's not about passing judgment on people because they haven't gotten to this point or that point or whatever. My only criticism, what's truly evil, what's truly sinful, is if you stay where you are. That makes sense. You know, uh, then we, when we are doing that, we are truly anti-Christ. We are anti-life, uh, you know, uh, uh, when we are refusing or uh, not not moving forward in the ways that you spoke to in an evolutionary way to the best of our ability. All right, Master Yao. So, yeah, that deep bow to you, you know, much respect, you know, to you and the ancestors and your your spirit guides for, for bringing through, you know, the, the knowledge and imparting it to us in a loving and kind way, you know, but, you know, still – Still giving us that I like the the flail and the crook, right? You know that the, the the queens and the pharaohs had, like you know, sometimes gently, you know, pull, uh, you know, pull someone back with the feminine energy, and sometimes using that masculine energy, uh, to to use that that flail to you now get your ass up and, and do it right. <laughs> so you you have a good balance of that, and I appreciate you. I appreciate that so much. Thank you so much. For sure. For sure. All right, y'all family, and again, I'm Shofar. Uh, this is Faux Show uh, Health on Blog Talk Radio, and I'm your host, Shofar, from Faux Show Energy Work. Um, y'all keep shining calm and keep that SEX, that Central Emotional Exchange. Keep shining, keep evolving, and do so exponentially. Peace. <laughs>